Hi, this is Ed Gregory from Photos in Color, and today I'm going to show you how to use the basic panel in Lightroom CC. Okay, so we're going to be looking at only the basic panel in Lightroom today, which is basically the basic tonal things that we can change within the image. So it's the highlights, the shadows, the brights, the darks, the exposure, the contrast, things like this. And I'm going to show you exactly what they do to your image. So let's jump into Lightroom. So here we are in the library module. To actually make an edit, we have to go over to the develop module, okay? Now you can do that by clicking develop or pressing D, and that brings you over. This is the image that we're going to be working with today. Just this one image here. So you can see it's in the UK. It's it's actually fairly well exposed. It's a little overexposed here and underexposed here. It's an image with lots of range of, of high dynamic range. However, we didn't take an HDR photo. So we're gonna have to work with this. So here we go, we've got the basic panel. That's the only thing we're going to use today. So if we click on this, it brings down some things. So the first thing is white balance. Okay, so white balance i have it set to as shot you can do auto and it'll try and have a look at it that's actually giving it a bit of a yellow cast which is actually perfect for this image so we, we might go with that but there's also you can tell it what it is so you could say that it was cloudy and it's going to and it actually stayed pretty much the same daylight okay that's actually going to take the yellows out and add some blues to it um, and then if we go for things like tungsten, obviously a huge change here. It's going to add a lot of blue to it, take all the yellow out. Fluorescent is going to do something similar. Um, flash, it's going to basically bring it all pretty much aligned um, with that. So I'm actually going to go for auto on this one. You can also select by using the dropper tool here by actually selecting something which you want to be set as white. So we don't, we want something gray to do that. So we're gonna try this cloud, but there's probably going to be too much blue in it. Although that did a good job. So let's keep with that for today. So the next thing we're going to do is look down here at these uh, six sliders, okay? So what are we going to do with these? Well, the exposure does the overall image. So we can see by sliding this here, it does overall, it just under, it boosts exposure or reduce it, brighter or darker, very simple. Now I do want to draw your attention up here, okay, to the histogram. This is gonna help us a lot. So if we move this, you can see the middle section actually goes gray. That is, your, it's only moving things within that and that moves your entire histogram. Now, below that we have contrast, which is basically splitting it. So more contrast is whites go whiter, darks go darker. Less contrast, blacks go to gray and whites come down to gray. So there's less, less dynamic range within those lights and darks. And then we can go in here and be very specific, highlight shadows, whites and darks. So let's quickly show you with this image what I mean. Okay, so basically, if we look here, the whole thing, exposure, all of it gets lighter, all of it gets darker. This is all different versions of gray. So 50% gray all the way to white and black. Now, if we change the highlights, you're gonna see only numbers eight, nine, and 10 have really been altered. Whereas if I go down to the blacks, only one, two, three, and four have really been changed because they're the highlights and the darks, whereas 10 is not really been changed at this point. So we can actually use this to help us. So if we come in here and make this edit, I can see already the very light area here needs to need to bring those whites down because it's a little bit overexposed. So if we select the highlights and bring this down, we're going to just see that some of those clouds are going to come back in in the detail, which is fantastic. Now, we can help ourselves by pressing Option or Alt on a mat, on a PC to actually see this. Anything that appears white as it just has done basically means that that is pure white. It means that there is no detail left in there. So if we boost this, all of that area becomes white. There's no detail whatsoever left in this area. Whereas if we go the opposite direction and we make all that disappear, now we can actually see we've got some details. So that can help us a lot. So let's do that with the highlights. And then the next thing is the shadows. So we can see here it's really quite dark. 
so we want to boost those shadows and again if we were to click there we can see that that's where we've lost detail and I'm pressing option or alt here and if I slide until that goes away like so now you can see just by moving this slider I've brought all of those things back and then my whites I can do something similar okay so I actually want to boost my whites a little bit and my darks I'm actually going to drop those down a little bit too just to add a little bit of contrast back contrast I'm going to come back up and boost my contrast slightly and then my exposure I think it's a little bright I'm going to bring it down just a touch now already if we look at the beginning before and after I'm, I'm pressing forward slash here that's what's going to allow me to look at the before and the after and the image is a dramatic change through using these sliders now I chose an image so we can be very dramatic with this and the sliders have gone a lot most images you're not going to move it that much the final three sliders at the bottom here are more kind of adding some effects to things I would say your clarity okay that's what that does basically is it high it uses contrast and also the edges of things to basically make it look a little sharper or clearer hence clarity it's a little bit weird how this works and be very careful with this because if you go too far like so it adds this very dramatic weird thing and if you go backwards what it does it actually softens everything like so so I would say use that sparingly I barely use it for this image I'm gonna go plus five just to give it a little bit there now vibrance and saturation very simple the bottom one is saturation that means we are basically adding more color or taking away color that is currently there so you can see take it all the way down it's black and white all the way up it's kind of crazy now vibrance what that does is that actually looks at the image and things that are less saturated it'll boost those things so it's just gonna add that little bit of vibrance without it being too dramatic so we can see by moving this around this is a little bit more subtle so for this image I'm gonna boost my vibrancy up plus 10 and that's the final image and if we look at this now before and after and so let's have a look at the histogram now it's got this nice arced it's filling all of the histogram for this image I wanted it to look like this and if I reset it to the beginning you can see lots of darks and a little bit of a spike here so that's really great what we've done is we've managed to develop this image using only the basic sliders if that's helped please give me a thumbs up and remember subscribe to the channel we've got loads more videos coming follow us on Twitter or Facebook both are photos in color and there's photos in color.com with more information about things and featured artists and great information but really subscribe and if you've got any questions for what I've just spoken about or other things you'd like me to make videos on please write a comment below I will always respond to you and hopefully do a video for you as well anyway my name is Ed Gregory for photos in color and cue the theme tune. <laughs> hey.